Hey everyone, Sharing here. Welcome back to Coffee Talk. I hope you're doing well. In our last episode, we saw Lua and Bailey's try to sort out their wedding woes. And after Lua had to go to work, I wandered in and dropped some good vampire wisdom to Bailey's. And later in the evening, Hyde told us a very spicy story of his younger-ish years and the hijinks he pulled. What a salacious little twink. Anyway, let's continue. Monday, September 25th, 2023. And in the evening whispers for today, the rise and fall of Weirdstein box offices, a brief history. Sold out, replica astronaut suits, uh, experience an extreme increase in sales. I wonder why. And first wave of visa applications to Europe rejected for failure to include passport signatures. What? I hope the power hiccups didn't inf affect the machine too much. This is a very slow start. Ah, uh, jeez. Ah, here we go. Right in the nick of time. Hello! Welcome, you two. It's a relief to see you safe and sound. Hi, spicy boy. Yes, we're also very relieved. It was a little scary last time. We analyzed the events of the evening and found them 31.245% frightening and 68.755% distasteful. Leaving in such a hurry is not an experience we care to repeat. Hopefully this will be a quieter evening. Yes, that is our wish. Anyhow, greetings are customary in cafes, bars, and restaurants, are they not? Therefore, good evening. Good evening? Even in, if in reality, it should be good night. Uh... We find that very strange. That good evening is a way to say hello, but good night is a way to say goodbye. Is this assuming that you never start an encounter at night? We... Because that theory would appear to be empirically wrong. For example, this is the second time we meet, Earth Child, and both times have been at night. Our 100% sample does not bear out the aforementioned premise, but... Additionally, the very concepts of evening and morning seem only marginally. Um, Amanda? Yes, what is it? <laughs> I think Spicy Boy tried to interject a couple of times. Forgive me if I'm mistaken, Spicy Boy. Ah, no, it's alright. <laughs> I didn't have anything important to say. Silver doing the shy fingers thing. <laughs> the thing is... I'm not sure why our greetings have a circadian rhythm. Earthlings are creatures of habit, I suppose. They get a, they get attached to certain ways of using language, and often don't question the actual meaning of words. Yes, at least in this particular case, no one's getting hurt. Since I arrived here, I've observed that some thoughtless uses of language can have a much more painful effect. Indeed. We see, and we agree. And we apologize for interrupting you, spicy boy. Don't worry about it. Communicating without a hive connection is rather challenging. Besides, we have been in a somewhat heightened mental state. We have been finding Earth quite curious. Extraordinary, even. We are keen to absorb as much information as we can during our visit here. It seems to us our siblings who previously visited Earth came back with findings of a rather superficial nature. We are excited to gather data that will advance the science of Earth studies. Our return to the Hive will be triumphal. <laughs> of course, we do not do such things for the glory, but still, we are looking forward to seeing our work recognized. So, are you a scholar, Miss Amanda? 
Yes, that is a good equivalence of what we are. We specialize in data gathering and analysis of poorly charted territories. That sounds very impressive. Oh, DGAPCT is much less impressive than our siblings' mission. Silver is an explorer and an adventurer. He is deserving of respect. And his mission is to find a prospective partner is of the utmost importance. Still perspective, huh? And no progress on that front, I take it? Well, I wouldn't quite say that. Whoa, very intriguing. <laughs> You're always so professional, spicy boy. You rarely ask direct questions. But I think you were a little curious about the gossip, right? What is gossip? Uh, gossip is... information about what goes on in other people's lives. Oh, we see. So it's like data on individual beings, then? Yeah, that sounds right. We love gossip. What is wrong with it? Uh, nothing at all. And I would love to listen to yours. But let me at least make you a drink first. We must consider our choice of drink carefully. We suggest our sibling goes first. Are you ready to order silver? I have an idea, yes. Can we expect an interesting new recipe? You're a barista yourself now, after all. A uh, barista? How am I... Oh. Oh, you mean the cafe. Yeah, you mentioned you were opening one, didn't you? Uh, I am, after a fashion. But I'm not focusing on drink menus just yet. Is this, is this sweater like Star Trek? I just noticed that. Also intriguing. I promise I'm not just withholding information, spicy boy. But things are a little complicated. Is it alright if we just start with the drink? I'll try to m my best to explain everything afterwards. That sounds good to me. Then, I think I'd like something simple tonight. Do you remember the first drink I ordered when I came here years ago? Wasn't it a coffee-based drink? It was a coffee drink, and I think you mentioned it was very bitter. Bitter and tart, right? Yeah, I think that's right. A bitter and tart coffee drink. A bitter and tart coffee drink. Gotta have lemon in it. A black lemon? Is that it? Oh yeah. Can we give the agent's ID to him? What is... I got a, off the agent last time he was here. This is quite something. Thank you, spicy boy. Truly. You can't know how much it helps, but it really does. Don't mention it. I thought, you know, maybe you'd find a, a way to put it to good use. I'm sure I can figure something out. You seem to have grown quite creative over the months. I guess I have somewhat. I'll let you know how this plays out in the end. Thank you again. Here's a black lemon for you, Silver. This definitely looks like what I had in mind. And it tastes interesting. It's very minimal, yet strong. Very enjoyable. I think I may prefer sweeter things, but I'm glad I tried this one. Hmm. You know, I second what Miss Amanda said last time. You feel the same in some ways, yet also very different. I don't know. I do think that everyone keeps changing all the time. Maybe we feel like our personalities make sense, because we see ourselves in hindsight. When the truth is, we make ourselves up as we go along. That is an insightful theory, Silver. You have grown wiser. You used to be a rather youthful and innocent part of the hive. Ah, uh, well, I've had time 
I've had to learn and adapt here. It's been a couple years after all. But despite all that, and considering what I said about people changing all the time, I don't, I don't think I've changed all that much. In fact, it's as if I've been becoming a little more me every day. Just revealing myself. Speaking of that, we meant to ask. How did you choose this specific Earthling appearance over another? Our observation is that Earthlings come in a great many varieties. With a near infinity of combinations. Did you run a random generation algorithm? Oh no, it wasn't random at all. Even if at first it was in a conscious process. I chose the way I looked because it felt true to who I am. When I first started coming to this cafe, I had a hard time understanding this world and its rules. But there were already some things that I could relate to. Some things that felt familiar. Like Hyde's eyes that always see beyond the surface. Or Gala's outfit, which is a sign of kindness and trust. I borrowed those traits from them without even realizing it. You took inspiration from them. Yes, our species seems to have the ability to do that. But Gala's fashion I couldn't keep after all. It came with responsibilities. It had it like a doctor's outfit. People stopped me all the time to ask me for medical advice. I can see how that would be problematic. Yeah, but I've, then I found this fictional universe. Where all the stories take place in the stars. So I changed my outfit to imitate theirs. And at some point it all came together. One morning I saw myself in the mirror and I felt right. Like the way I looked matched who I was. It made me feel at peace. So, although I look different now from when we first met, and although I've learned the ways of the world a bit and grown a bit, in many ways, I still feel the same. Oh, if only we could all unlock our inner Trekkies. Different but same. Yes, different but same. It makes sense to us. It really does. <laughs> I like his wallpaper. Oh, is this Laurel? Laurel? No, this is from Pearl. Hmm, still no news from Midge. We think the odds are now 84.308% that she is phantoming you. Do you mean ghosting? We mean phantoming, as in when you think you hear a sound. But your ears are merely playing a trick on you. We thought we have established a hive connection with Midge. But it was only a phantom sound, after all. Anyhow, what is Pearl saying? That her calendar might clear up soon if I want to meet up. Ooh, silver. Sounds like things are going very well indeed. I think it may be time I tell you a little bit about this. But we wish to order a drink as well. Oh, of course. I'm so sorry. Go ahead, Amanda. Are you faxing something? Oh, <laughs> our apologies, but the machine's having issues today. We'll let you know as soon as it's working again. Curious that Earth drinking making skills are so refined, yet so unreliable. This is a land of contradictions. It sure is. But do carry on sibling. Right, so... I've been relying on Amanda to help me with the online part of online dating. And it's been working really well. On average. There have also been some small issues. Earthlings are strange. Online dating has a reputation for emphasizing that, yes. Some Earthlings express their interest. But when you say hello, they never answer back. Well, in real life, saying hello is a starter for 99.845% of conversations. It seems that online, more humorous or breeding-oriented openers are favored. Huh? <laughs> However, if an opener is entirely horned, it is considered out of bounds and angrily dismissed. Horned? Horned? 
Yes, that is when prospective partners send you close-up pictures of their horns. <laughs> People do that? Oh, yes. I think it would be fine after a bit of conversation. If we get into the mood and they ask me first, I'd probably say yes. Horns can be really pretty, you know, but it feels very strange when that's the first thing they do. Before they even write a single word. I can imagine. And then, sometimes Earthlings express interest. But after reading a joke that is statistically funny 99.908% of the time, they answer with a sad face and block communications. Funny for you 99.908% of the time? Yes. Hmm. Fortunately, online dating is governed by the law of large numbers, which favors persistence. We are patient. Amanda has been spending a lot of time on the app, and it started to work out. I'm now having conversations with really nice people, especially Pearl. We prefer Laurel. Her facial features are more symmetrical, but Silver seems to f favor the asymmetrical Earthling. Amanda, don't be an incel. It's just... She sounds like a really good person. She's a communications director for a charity that fights homelessness. She cares about other people a lot. I don't think she's been very lucky in return. But she's very funny and curious of everything and her smile. Please desist. We can sense your hormones boiling. <laughs> And she's the person you might be getting a date with. I really hope so. Is it Pearl? She's blowing up your phone, man. Do you have a day and time for your date? No. This is on a different topic. Uh, please excuse me. What's going on? I... So, I take it you've been enjoying your time on Earth, Miss Amanda? Hmm. Or not? No, we have been enjoying it. But we also see the limits of it. How do you mean? We are a hive mind. A hive mind knows no boundaries or limitations. We share all our thoughts and desires. It is not difficult for us to connect. We are born connected. But Earthlings are guarded. They have complex emotions. And they have no means of truly knowing what anyone else feels. That makes them afraid of judgment and hurt. It must be very difficult and painful for them to connect deeply. There is so much they let, must let go of first. We could not live like that. You said that online networks were like a hive. Like a hive, but not a true hive. A true hive requires honesty and directness, as well as desire to deeply understand others. I see. You don't think you could ever adapt the way Silver has? Silver is different. Even when he was a part of us, we could sense him looking outwards. That is why he has become such an amazing explorer. And that is why he made the effort to learn Earthlings' codes and behaviors. He did not just want to understand. He wanted to experience. We are not like him. We like to seek knowledge on what is different from us. But once we have that knowledge, we are satisfied. Uncovering it and bringing it back is what makes us... ...happy. Hmm, this is curious. It seems we are picking up some Earthling instincts, after all. It is a good thing that our data readings here should soon be complete. And Silver's on his way to getting a date. It would appear so. Any luck? Oh. Amanda, we have to go. What? Again? That call was bad news. The agent. Oh, shit. Too late. Just hide behind the counter, quick. Oh, shit. <clears throat> Good 
Good evening, Mr. Agent. We apologize, but our machine has been having issues. We cannot serve drinks at the moment. You know very well I'm not here for drinks. I'd rather not involve any more civilians in this, though. Oh, uh, do you mean me? I'm sorry, but can't whatever this is wait for another night? I haven't finished my drink yet, and it looks like rain outside. Well, here's something that can't wait, for starters. Barista, did you happen to find an ID card lying around? An ID card? Um, uh, not that I can recall, no. <laughs> I certainly hope you're telling the truth. Mr. Agent, you seem to always doubt me. But you've been here several times already. Surely you should see by now that I'm not lying. Well, you're awfully good at avoiding straight answers and... Losing an ID card sounds very troublesome. Back when I worked at a delivery center, they would make us pay a lot to replace lost ID cards. Ugh. That's not even the start of it. My job is a lot less forgiving than a delivery center. I'm very sorry to hear that. But what's your job exactly? We uncover illegal aliens and extradite them. Which is why I've been coming here in the first place. We keep getting tips that there have been alien sightings around this cafe. Speaking of which, have you noticed anything out of the ordinary, young man? I, uh, can't say that I have. I don't come here all that often. But it's always seemed very above board to me. Are you sure the tips aren't a prank? It seems that some young people enjoy these as a pastime. There are very popular videos of them online. That... Maybe it is, but I still have to investigate properly. Otherwise, my superiors will have my head on a platter. But you can't just waste your time on a gold trail either. Surely your superiors will see that you've done your best. I doubt that. They're a bit obsessed with the alien situation. Obsessed? Is it really that big of an issue? Well, having such unusual elements dis around it disturbs the public peace. Your average Joe has no clue what to make of them, you know? It makes people feel unsettled. I see. Although the visible aliens aren't too bad from where I'm standing, at least we can identify them and ex extract them. Aliens who try to pass for Earthlings are a bigger problem. Why so? For one, it just muddles things. No matter how much they try to look like Earthlings, they were born aliens, and aliens they were, will remain. But now they're aliens who don't look like aliens. What does that mean, you know? And where does it stop? What if some Earthling decided they wanted to look like aliens? That would be a huge mess. Would it? Anyway, the top brass insists that we go after them. And in the end, that makes my job a lot harder. All that time spent detecting them. Give me a good spacesuit wearing alien any day, you know? Hmm. Oh, but don't you worry about a thing. We at FIRE always find a way to keep the public safe. I see. So, how do you go about detecting them, exactly? That one's easy. Once I have my suspicions, I check their ID. That makes it all clear, right? Right. I do wonder, though. What is it? And I'm sorry if I'm being too curious. I have a habit of putting my foot in my mouth. No, you're good. No harm in asking. In that case... What is it that makes aliens so very different? 
There are all sorts of people living here. They all have different personalities, different looks. And for me, when I walk through the streets of Seattle, and I see that no two people are alike, I'll admit that it makes me very happy. So, if someone comes from further away, but they feel an earthling at heart, would they really be more different from the people who live in this city? Than the people in this city are different from each other? Or would they just be another version of an earthling? Perhaps no less beautiful. Hmm. At the end of the day, who the heck knows? It's not like I can afford to spend time pondering it. I don't have a dog in this fight, so to speak. Thing is, the law is the law, and my job is to uphold it. Right, but despite everything you said, it's still unclear to me why the law is so stringent against aliens. Ah, uh, well, it's not so much that the law is stringent against them, it's more that there's no law for them. How do you mean? Well, at this point, we have treaties and codes for all the races we know of, right? But we never made a treaty with aliens or anything resembling it. There's no law even acknowledging their existence. Oof, I didn't know that. But why is that a problem? That's easy. We have no way to regulate their presence. There's been no thorough analysis of how they can cohabitate with Earthlings. As I said, it's all very confusing. For all we know, they could be very damaging to us. So it feels safer to keep them away, at least for now. Safer for whom? It is what it is. I'm not afraid of aliens myself. And going after them is not my biggest passion. But since I'm doing this job, might as well aim for a promotion. Anyhow, just call us at fire if you spot any aliens, alright? You seem like an honest sort, unlike some other people. Some other people who should learn to be more straightforward if they want their business to stay in business. Uh. Uh. What was that? Just the coffee machine. It seems to have restarted now. That's a relief. Right. I think I'm still going to conduct a search of the premises. Just to be on the safe. Meow. Oh shit, what the heck is this? <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, this is a local cat. It's come over once before. Looks like it might be hiding from another stray. It's very cute. Good kitty. Meow. I think it likes you. What sort of a place is this? With your fiddly machine and your weird pets. And now it looks like I have an emergency elsewhere. Well, I guess you're off the hook for now. You and your cafe. But make sure I don't get such reports about you anymore. Uh, we will try our best, Mr. Agent. <sighs> what a relief. Silver, you're trembling. That's alright. You can come out now, I think, Amanda. Well, we found this experience... 100% distasteful. Actually, it was 48.235% distasteful, 20.834% scary, and 38.931% exciting. <laughs> I apologize, this is just nerves. We're truly sorry for this disturbance. It's not your fault at all. But should you be sticking around here? The agent might come back. No. I lured him away, 
At least for now. You did? Although it's a good thing the little cat came in when it did. It bought us some precious minutes. What sort of earthling are you? Wow. Mm-hmm, we see. Do you speak cat? We can feel this earthling's intent better than usual. It is expressing it clearly. It wishes to rest and be left alone. I... Oh, I feel all out of sorts. Is the machine really working again? Oh, you never got your drink. It is indeed. Then make us a drink, and one for silver as well. The same one should be fine for both. Just make it hot and comforting, and what would you like, sibling? I think I need some sweetness right now. I would really appreciate a hot, very sweet, very comforting drink. Alright then. Very sweet and comforting. How about some cocoa with extra honey? Here you go. Plenty of sweetness in this. This tastes amazing. Thank you, spicy boy. This really is my kind of drink. It is very thick, is it not? The viscosity of this seems to be nearing 10,000 CPs. We like how different this experience is from the drink you served us from the other night. I'm impressed though, Silver. You've become quite savvy at navigating these situations. Even if I'm sure you'd rather avoid them altogether. Yes, I, I would pre definitely prefer to avoid them. But I need to get used to them anyway. Why? The agent doesn't know you've come from outer space. Surely you should be off the hook for now. It's more complicated than that. Spicy boy, you know the cafe I said I'm opening? Yes. Well, it's not exactly like this cafe. In fact, it's not exactly a cafe at all. For the past few months, it's been the basis of operations. For SAVE. SAVE? SAVE. Society for Aliens and Various Extraterrestrials. I see. Wow. I know, it sounds very reckless. No, it sounds very admirable. I think I underestimated you. I don't know. But you see I've be why I've had become so savvy, as you said. I have a lot of people depending on me now. Those who are just arriving to Earth and are confused and scared. Those who have adopted Earthling appearances and those who are learning how to understand life here and how to understand themselves. For all of them, it's an existential matter. Not everyone is meant to be a hive mind. I know I wasn't. And no offense, Amanda. We are not offended. We have always known you are different from us. It is all the same to us. You are our sibling, whether you live as the hive, or as an earthling. Uh... Amanda... I really do love you. What is love? That is not a conversation I think I can have right now. I'll explain it to you tomorrow, okay? After we both have a rest. We will remind you of it. I know you will. I think I'm getting a little tired now. Is it alright if we go back? Absolutely. Our energy is also 98.429% depleted. Silver, is there anything we can do to help? No, I don't think so. Thank you for offering, really. 
but you have a different part to play in all this. And you've been playing it very well. You're very kind. Well, in that case... Have a good night, the two of you. And please, come again soon. You'll always be welcome here. Us and many others. We know, and we're grateful. Good night, spicy boy. I'd say good night to the cat, but I don't think it needs my wishes. <laughs> good night, spicy boy. See? Now we can use good night. We find it rather odd that... Maybe we should continue this chat while we walk. All right. <sighs> what a night. This has been a great deal more animated than we bargained for. And I suppose we have a new four-legged friend now. I wonder what you're doing here, little one. Don't you have a home? Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to wake you up. Meow. Meow. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, I guess it's time for you to let me close shop. But Silver, it's an honor to be related to someone like you. Hmm. Okay, I think we'll leave the episode here for today. And what a day it's been. I think Silver is so well adjusted now, it's... It's kind of crazy how fast that was. Just a few years ago, he was telling everyone he wanted to breed. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please remember to take care of yourself today, and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.